Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We are interested in the expectation of this product of four random variables. Specifically, these four random variables are jointly Gaussian. Each has a mean of zero. They are circularly symmetric, complex valued random variables. Two of the random variables inside the expectation appear without complex conjugation, and two appear with complex conjugation. During our investigation, we also obtain the expectation of the product of the four random variables where none is complex conjugated. The result we are after is the sum of two products. On the right-hand side, we have expectations applied to the product of two random variables. Inside each expectation, we have a random variable that is not complex conjugated and another one that is complex conjugated. We take xk, xl conjugate in one expectation. The other one contains xv, xr conjugate. Then we have the expectation of xk, xr conjugate. The other expectation involves xv times xl conjugate. In order to prove this identity, we differentiate the joint characteristic function of the random variables. If we have random variables that are proper or circularly symmetric, and they are the components of random vector z, the characteristic function of z, which is a function of u with n components, if this random vector is n-dimensional, we have u1, u2, all the way to un. Each one of these guys is complex, so u1 is the real part of u1 plus i, the imaginary part of u1, and so on. The characteristic function is the expectation of e to the i, the real part of u Hermitian times z. How will we carry out the differentiation process? We differentiate with respect to the components of vector u, but each component in vector u is complex valued. If g is a function of u, we define nabla sub u of g, and we put here superscript k. This is the partial derivative of g with respect to the real part of u k plus i times the partial derivative of g with respect to the imaginary part of u k. If we put a bar, we replace this plus i by minus i. From the definition of the characteristic function, we are interested in a function g that looks like u Hermitian z or z Hermitian u. If z is circular symmetric, zero mean random vector with covariance matrix A, then the characteristic function is e to the minus 1 over 4 u Hermitian A u. We are also interested in functions of vector u that are like this quadratic form with a Hermitian matrix. Let's start with the linear functions of u. Alpha is a vector of the same dimensionality as vector u. Alpha Hermitian u is alpha 1 conjugate u1 plus alpha 2 conjugate u2 all the way to alpha n conjugate un. We also have the complex conjugate of alpha Hermitian u, which is u Hermitian alpha. We are also interested in the sum. The characteristic function has the real part of the inner product between vectors u and z. And the real part of a complex quantity is one half the complex quantity plus one half its complex conjugate. That's the reason we are interested in functions of this form. In this presentation, vector ek is a canonical coordinate vector. Ek has one in the kth place. Other elements are equal to zero. We want to partially differentiate this linear function of u with respect to the real and imaginary parts of uk, the kth component of vector u. Suppose that we have a function f that depends on variables u1, u2, and so forth. We are interested in the partial derivative of that function with respect to u1. We take f of u1 plus t. The other variables are left intact. We subtract f of u1, u2, and so on. We divide by t and then investigate the limit as t tends to 0. If this limit exists, then that's the partial derivative of f with respect to u1. We apply the same idea here. If I want to partially differentiate with respect to uk, what I do is that I take vector u and add to it t times the vector ek. This means that t is added to the real part of uk. If k is equal to 3, then this vector is u1, u2, u3 plus t, which is the real part of u3 plus t plus i, the imaginary part of u3, then u4, u5, and so on. We subtract the function of u, we divide by t, and take the limit as t tends to 0. If we want to partially differentiate with respect to the imaginary part of uk rather than the real part, then we add to vector u i t e k. Every component in u remains as is, except the kth component, it becomes the real part of uk plus i between brackets, the imaginary part of uk plus t. We have alpha Hermitian u minus alpha Hermitian u, that's zero. Then we get t alpha Hermitian e k divided by t, that's alpha Hermitian e k. Because e k is an all zero vector except the one it has in the kth position, this inner product is alpha k conjugate. However, in our case here, there is plus i, and when we simplify this part, we get i alpha Hermitian e k. i squared is minus one, so this is equal to zero. Applying this operator to the function alpha Hermitian u yields zero. What if we have u Hermitian alpha? From here, we get e k Hermitian alpha, which is the same as e k transpose alpha, and this is alpha k. We have plus i. When we expand, we get u Hermitian, plus i becomes minus i. t is real. Its complex conjugate is itself. Then we have e k Hermitian, which is e k transpose. 
This is multiplied by alpha. U Hermitian alpha minus U Hermitian alpha, that's zero. The surviving term is minus I T E K transpose alpha. This is minus I alpha K minus I times plus I is one. We get to alpha K. So applying this operator to alpha Hermitian U results in zero. If we rather apply this operator to U Hermitian alpha, we get to alpha K. If we apply the operator to the sum, we get to alpha K. The operator with R when applied to a function G of U means that we partially differentiate the function with respect to the real part of UK. We also differentiate the function with respect to the imaginary part of UK. We multiply this partial derivative by minus I and add to the partial derivative with respect to the real part. So we have minus I here rather than plus I. To do the partial derivative with respect to the real part, we perturb vector U by adding the real number T multiplied by EK. To partially differentiate with respect to the imaginary part, we add I times real T times EK. From here, we get alpha Hermitian EK. Then we have minus I. From there, we have I alpha Hermitian EK. This is two alpha Hermitian EK, which is two alpha K conjugate. Applying this operator to U Hermitian alpha gives zero. Applying it to the sum gives two times the complex conjugate of alpha K. Now we investigate the quadratic function of U, U Hermitian AU, where A is a Hermitian matrix. To partially differentiate the real part, we perturb U by the real value T times EK. We subtract the quadratic form. We divide by T. This part is U Hermitian plus T EK transpose. Multiplying A by this bracket from the left, we get AU plus T A EK. When we expand, we obtain four terms. U Hermitian AU, which goes away with this one. The remaining terms in the numerator are T EK transpose AU plus T U Hermitian A EK plus T squared EK transpose A EK. Dividing by T, we get EK transpose AU plus U Hermitian A EK plus T EK transpose A EK. This part tends to zero as T tends to zero. We end up with these two terms here. For the partial derivative with respect to the imaginary part of UK, we perturb vector U by adding I times real T times EK. The Hermitian of this bracket is U Hermitian minus I T EK transpose. A multiplied by this bracket is AU plus I T A EK. We expand and simplify. This goes to zero as T tends to zero. These are the surviving terms. When multiplied by I, we get EK transpose AU minus U Hermitian A EK. This goes away with that. Applying this operator to U Hermitian AU yields two times EK transpose AU. If matrix A is multiplied by a row vector that is all zero except one in the kth position, the result is the kth row in the matrix. A is a Hermitian matrix, so A is equal to A Hermitian. The kth row in matrix A is the Hermitian of the kth column. When we apply the operator with bar, this plus sign is changed into a minus sign. The final result will be two times U Hermitian AEK. That's two. U Hermitian, the kth column in matrix A. These are our results so far. We apply these differentiation operators to the characteristic function of the circularly symmetric complex valued random vector X. The characteristic function is the expectation of E to the I times the real part of the inner product between U and X, specifically U Hermitian X. The exponent can be written as I over two times X Hermitian U plus U Hermitian X. Our main interest is in a Gaussian random vector all the moments are finite, and we are justified in interchanging the order of differentiation and expectation. When we apply this operator to the exponential, we get it back. By the chain rule, we have i over 2 times 2xk. Here is the i. 2xk over 2 is xk. Employing this operator, we get xk inside the expectation. If we follow this operation by the same operator, but now we are focusing on the lth component, we get i xl. Here is xl i times i is minus 1. Same operator applied to the vth component. We get xv times i. i times minus 1 is minus i. Finally, if we apply the operator with r here, we get xr times i. i times minus i is plus 1. Applying these four operators to the characteristic function, we get the expectation of the exponential times the product of these four random values. Now, if we set u equal to the all zero vector, the exponential is equal to 1. And we have the expectation of the product of xk, xl, xv, and xr. Let's do a little change. We also apply four operators to the characteristic function. The difference is that when we deal with the lth component and the rth component, we use the barred operator. We have previously seen that this leads to different results. The first step is the same. We get i and we get xk inside the expectation. When we apply this operator to x Hermitian u plus u Hermitian x, 
we get two XL conjugate. Inside the expectation, we have now XK XL conjugate rather than XK XL. We get XV. Because of this bar here, we get XR conjugate. When we apply these operators, we get the product XK XL conjugate XV XR conjugate multiplied by the exponential. The exponential is one if we set the U vector equal to the all zero vector. Recall that the difference between the operators stems from how they are defined. Here we have plus I, there we have minus I. The important conclusion that we have is that expectations applied to products of four random variables can be obtained via applying these differentiation operators to the characteristic function, then setting all U's to zero. On the third page, we have seen how applying the differentiation operators to the characteristic function gives us expressions for the moments of interest. Now focus on this particular characteristic function. Matrix A is the covariance matrix of the circularly symmetric zero mean Gaussian random vector X. We need to handle derivatives of the quadratic form. When we apply this operator to the exponential, we have the exponential. Then by the chain rule, we have minus one over four, two multiplied by the Hermitian of the kth column of matrix A times vector U. Let's apply this operator, which focuses on the lth component. We have two functions of U multiplied together. We employ the product rule for differentiation. This is what we get when we differentiate the exponential. When we differentiate this function of U, we get zero. Now apply this operator to this part here. We have the product of three functions. We get zero when we differentiate this inner product or that one. Our result is the product of these two brackets times the differentiation operator applied to the exponential. We get the exponential and the bracket that looks like these two, except that it involves the vth column of matrix A. Same story when we differentiate with respect to the rth component. When U is the all zero vector, all these inner products are equal to zero. The expectation of xk, xl, xv, xr is equal to zero. Let's try the admixture of differentiation operators. First step is the same like here. In the second step, however, we use this operator, which combines the partial derivatives with respect to the real and imaginary parts with minus rather than plus i. If this operator is applied to alpha Hermitian u, we get two alpha l conjugate. So when this operator is applied to this bracket, we have minus half times two times the conjugate of the lth element in the kth column of A. This is element ALK in matrix A. Because matrix A is a Hermitian matrix, then ALK conjugate is equal to AKL. Now we handle the derivative with respect to the vth component of vector U. We have here the product of three functions of U. When we differentiate the exponential, we get it back. Then by the chain rule, we have minus one over four times the derivative of the quadratic form which is two multiplied by the Hermitian of the vth column of matrix A times U. Then we have these two terms. When we apply this operator to this inner product, we get two times the vth component in this column vector. That's element AVL in matrix A. Multiplying by minus one half, we get minus AVL. When this operator is applied to that inner product, we get zero. In this part, we have AKL, which is not a function of U. We need to differentiate the exponential. We get exactly these two terms. Now the last step, this is a function of U. We want the partial derivative of this function with respect to the real part of UR, the rth component of vector U, minus I times the partial derivative of this function of U with respect to the imaginary part of UR. This is what we get if we do things in slow motion. However, recall that we eventually set U to the old zero vector. We can ignore the parts that will be zero, for instance, when we differentiate the product of these four functions of U, we end up with terms involving the inner product of U and some column in matrix A. All these inner products are zero when U is the all zero vector. So we can actually ignore this part here. The relevant term when we differentiate this part is when we differentiate the inner product, the operator applied to the inner product of the kth column of A and U gives two times the complex conjugate of the rth element in this vector, which is element ARK in covariance matrix A. When the U's are set to zero, this part here becomes AVL times AKR because the complex conjugate of ARK is AKR. We are in the same situation when we differentiate this bracket here. We get minus one half times two times the complex conjugate of ARV, and this is AVR. So we have this product added to AVR times AKL. A is the covariance matrix of zero mean random vector X. Element AGM by definition is the expectation of xj times the complex conjugate of xm. This expectation, which is obtained via applying these four differentiation operators to the characteristic function, is equal to the expectation of xk xl conjugate times the expectation of xv xr conjugate plus the expectation of xk xr conjugate 
times the expectation of XV XL quantity.